Good morning, colleagues. My name is Anastasia Alexandrovich, and on behalf of um, Press Club and the Russian Focus, I'm glad to welcome all of you here um, in our online format at the presentation of the new sociological survey of the China Mass. Today, we have uh, Rahul Rastapeni, who is director of the Belarusian Initiative of Chatham House. Good morning, Rahul. Good morning. Today we will talk uh, about who Belarusians trust, what they think about the political crisis, how they evaluate uh, the political tensions in the society, and a number of other issues will be touched upon by Rahul in his presentation. Several technical details. Uh, if uh, there are English-speaking media among us, please select the English track in Zoom. Those of you who have joined us uh, uh, several minutes ago, please rename yourself so that uh, there will be your first last name and the media name. If you're watching us on YouTube and you have questions, please write them in the com comment section. I will read them out. I'm giving floor to Rehor now. Rehor will tell us a lot of interesting things today. Then we'll switch into the Q&A format. You will either raise your hand or write the question in the chat. Rehor, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anastasia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Press Club, for organizing today's session. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, today, I will be telling you about the sixth wave of Chatham House sociological research. Uh, in October 2020, we launched the first wave. Today is the sixth one. We'll have a lot of slides, today, about 60. So I'll be brief and quick to cover everything in about half an hour. Then we'll have another half an hour for Q&A. I'm launching the presentation now. OK. So I'm going to show you today the results of a sociological survey we conducted in November last year. Unfortunately, we're publishing the results a little later than we planned. Here are the several points about their methodology. We always mentioned that. We conducted internet surveys, so we're limited by the internet users. So it's only the urban area citizens that are covered by us, uh, who are almost all of them are internet users. So we need to consider the fact that even though the, we are doing this as best as possible from the scientific point of view, the support of Lukashenko and his policies may be higher than that reflected in our surveys because we are using the internet surveys. On the other hand, uh, there's a fear factor involved uh, during such surveys that can influence the results. We will also mention that another important point is that we always do as everything is transparent as possible. We publish all the data that is available to everyone in this SAV file is publicly available for everyone to check and recheck. I'm uh, presenting this material today and uh, it will be available on the Chatham House website later today or tomorrow. Today, we'll have several blocks of information. Uh, it will be international relations, public perception of Lukashenko and the uh, fear factor, among others. Also, uh, very often we segment those in society to understand better how different parts of the society consider today's events in Belarus. We also segment the Belarusian or break uh, society into three parts the hardcore protesters, the neutrals, and Lukashenko's base. That's for you to understand how we treat our sample. Uh, 
um, in terms of principles behind the segmentation, we must say that the hardcore protesters are the people who say that they support a peaceful protest against the authorities. Neutrals, the neutral Koshchenko's base is self-evident. The as to the electoral preferences. We'll start with who people know. Alexander Lukashenko tops this list, as usual, uh, with 97%, of course, he is well known by everyone. And uh, often happens in this society. People say that they know, uh, and some people say they don't know, and it's natural. Therefore, it's 97, 98% happens in all countries. Uh, what's important to note here that after Alexander Lukashenko, the most well-known people are the protest leaders like Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, Viktor Babarika, Sergei Tikhanovsky, Valeria Tepkala, Maria Kalistka, and Pavel Latushka. Uh, state officials, even though they are shown by the state TV very often, are not that well-known to the public. What is more interesting here, these people uh recognized by people who support the protest and the, the, while the supporters of the current officials current authorities and know the representatives of the current authorities less well and not so good for example natalia kachanova is known by is recognized by nine out of ten protest supporters while only six out of ten representatives of uh, lukashenko support support supporters recognize it is important to understand the fact that the protest supporters are, are more active they're more interested in politics they know more in general, as is, was evident in the previous report, our surveys, for example, the Telegram channel uh, of the current authorities, Zolti Slivy, is mostly read by protesters and protest supporters, even though the content of the Telegram channel suits more the Lukashenko supporters, who no, don't know very well who Vladimir Karanik, Natalia Kachanova is, and they're less active. Okay, let's now talk about the presidential ratings. Today, we have two big politicians, Alexander Lukashenko and Viktor Babarika. Uh, supporters of Lukashenko Aksun are a consolidated group. For them, only he exists. On the other hand, I'm sorry for the technical issues we see that the, the democratic electorate is divided into several groups supporting different politicians if we put them together the joint electorate figures will be higher than that of alexander lukashenko at the same time, it's important to note that 22% of people say that they don't see the people who uh, should become the president of Belarus. We call them neutrals, usually. Here we see that uh, the divide between uh, the neutrals and their views are the potential president of Belarus. 39% of people here believe that none of them are eligible for this post, but we see that neutrals are prone to supporting democratic politicians rather than supporting Alexander Lukashenko. Lukashenko enjoys support of 14%. Oh, uh, well, Babarika support enjoys 16% and other politicians also have other pop certain popularity among the, the so-called neutrals. 
Then come the entry ratings. It's important to note here that Alexander Lukashenko has a huge entry rating. Uh, it means that uh, half, half of Belarusians would never vote for him again. Also, if we talk about the second politician, uh, Viktor Babarika, he, his entry rating is quite small, quite low. Again, we can um, analyze uh, Vladimir Karanik, Natalia Kachanova, Yuri Karayev. They are very high entry rating figures. It is ha has to do with the fact that they're uh, well known to the proponents of protest rather than the proponents of the current administration. Then we have a big um, trust slash awareness matrix of politicians. On the one hand, on the one axis, we see the people who are trusted and the other axis we see people who are not trusted and divided into two squares not well known and trusted, not well known and not trusted, well known and trusted, and well known but not trusted, anti-clockwise. The square, the top left square, not well known and trusted, are the people who are well known to the protesters and protest supporters. They are very high trust figures. If we look at the square that is placed underneath it, not well known and not trusted, we see here the representatives of the different political forces and with various political backgrounds like Yuri Vyskosinsky, uh, Roman Galochenko, who is the prime minister. Sergei Oleg Gadukevich, who is uh, officially an MP, Sergei Rumus, and uh, Olga Karach. Next, we see among the people who are well known and trusted, see three people like Pavla Tushka Maria Kristikva, Viktor Babarika. In the next square, well known but not trusted, we see uh, Tikhanovska and Lukashenko being close to each other. So it means that it is the influence of media outlets that is in play here, or more the state ones. It is aimed uh, against Svetlana Tikhanovska, which affects the opinions of the Belarusian citizens. Then next comes the trust of the government sector. The government bodies are not very well trusted, independent institutions are trusted more. As uh, we will see further, there are more of red light, red color in the graphs, which means that the the trust towards the current officials is, is, known, is not going up, and the number of people who are undecided and who are don't know is growing. We see that the more and more people like to keep away from politics, it has to do with their fears, including the surveys. We will mention that later. We see the, the, the combination of these factors shows that the, there's a dimension trust to the state sector. Uh, must also note here the most popular body here trusted by the people, 38% is the army, I mean among the state bodies. And it's uh, not great because uh, in Belarus, the majority of Belarusians do not trust their own army. 
if we consider who against the worst trust, I guess, is the CEC, Central Electoral Committee, uh, which enjoys the trust of 16% of Belarusians. Only half of uh, proponents of the current authorities, they trust the CEC. Also, the state media have very low trust ratings, only 19% which means the only 19% of respondents trust the state media. Next goes the independent sector. The most important thing here is that the independent media rank at the top of the trust ranking. Over 40% of people trust them. At the same time, the the mistrust level is quite low. They're followed by the independent trade unions, and the Orthodox Church and independent research organizations. We notice that those don't know how to treat the bipole. Here, 62% are in the gray. Next slide. It's all got mixed up here on my table because I have all of it printed. Next comes the trust index, that, which is the difference between the trust and distrust. As I said, ARM is the only state body enjoys about zero trust, zero percent trust. Other state bodies have a lower ratings uh, with Central Election Commission and state of media at the bottom. Uh, to the right, you'll see the index trust, trust index broken into various groups. Echo protesters don't trust any of those, uh, while Lukashenko's base does trust us, the government sector. The bottom of the Lukashenko's base shows that the, only half of his proponents trust the CC and the state-owned media. Next, we'll see the trust index of the independent sector. The situation here is better compared to the government sector. We'll see that in the non-state media rank at the top, followed by the Orthodox Church, independent human rights organizations, independent trade union. We see that the level of trust here is much higher. If you have questions, oh, we can go back to the, during the Q&A and to what you saw in the slides. We have a lot of things to cover. Next section is international relations. It's been a, a sixth wave of our questions when we asked Bill to other countries. Basically, Belarusians uh, have uh, good feeling about all countries and uh, anti-Americanism, anti-Russian sentiment as not popular, are not that popular uh, with Belarusians or with uh, one fifth of Belarusians thinking badly or very badly about the United States. But in terms of other countries, this level of bad fe feeling is much lower or a little less low. Next slide shows which political union should Belarus be in. We see that in Belarus, the, there are people who want to have similar relations with the EU and Russia, uh, meaning it shouldn't join any geopolitical unions. We see the two groups marked by gray, And the violet 
about uh, 66 percent. The protesters usually opt for the union with uh, Russia. Uh, but our supporters believe that we should uh, come closer to the EU. Alexander Russian opponents usually vote for or opt for the union with Russia. Next, the next question is, which option for the union with Russia seems most appropriate in your view? We see that the, in the majority of Belarusians see the union with Russia as something economic. They want to trade with Russia, want to have equal relationship uh, in economic uh, ties, while uh, at the same time, only proponents of Lukashenko want something more from the union with Russia, like the single economic space, the single army, and the people who believe that Belarus must jo join Russia and enter, uh, become part of Russia. There are few such people, but there are no proponents of Lukashenko. Let's move on. How do you feel about Vladimir Putin? We say that in the Belarusian society, there are polar views towards uh, Vladimir Putin, the bulwark of Lukashenko and his base. Mm, I like Putin, while the protesters do not like Putin very well, very much. Uh, well, neutrals have a rather good relationship, a good attitude to Putin. Every fourth of respondents was uh, mm, did not give any concrete answer. Next, uh, contradictory questions, contradictory questions, uh, whether Belarusians should stay in the collective security treaty or leave it and stay neutral or leave it to join NATO. And the second question, should Belarus abandon its constitutional and shrine neutrality or maintain it? We see that in the Belarusian society. a paradoxical situation when the majority of Belarusians believe that the, they should stay a member of the CSTO and become neutral at the same time. So to some degree, the result depends on the question we ask of these people. In general, however, if we look at this question, we'll see, and the answers, we'll see that the proponents of Lukashenko are in favor of CSTO membership, while the protesters uh, opt for neutrality and the neutrals are contradictory in their views and opinions. If we look at the second question, should Belarus abandon its constitutionally enshrined neutrality or maintain it, we see that the quite a small number of people are uh, in favor of this, about 1%, and they are proponents of Lukashenko, while the protesters believe Belarus should aim to become a neutral. The next question was, how do you feel about the possible establishment of Russian air bases in Belarus? The interesting thing here is that the number of people who have negative view of that is growing. We see that the Belarusian society is uh, is has more and more negative attitude to the Russian base station in Russia. So 20% of people say that they're indifferent to that. At least that was in November 2021. Well, I've, I've covered the conclusions, but as I said, we can always go back to any part of my presentation during the Q&A. Next section, the next section is public sentiment. What we see here, we offer people to agree or disagree with the following statements. Until now, uh, the attitude of people has not changed. Belarusians do not feel safe in Belarus. The majority of Belarusians, the majority of respondents believe that Belarus uh, is uh, 
on the verge of big economic crisis, although the number of such people enjoying such view has gone down uh, com in comparison with the previous survey. The next question is um, whether Belarus is coping well with the coronavirus pandemic. Only 21% of people believe that Belarus is success in this respect, and you must understand it's a very highly politicized question and issue here. The people trust Alexander Lukashenko and believe that it's very important to say that Belarus is coping with the coronavirus pandemic successfully. The next question, whether the family's financial situation has improved in the last two months, no, not much difference here. Uh, we see the number of people who say that Belarus uh, is on the verge of political crisis is going down. Next question, how do you feel about the Belarusian protest and do you support the protesters' demands? We see that the number of people who are positive or rather positive about the protest is going down. It's important to understand that it's not about protest only, but it's about the viability of such protest, because people may be against protest because saying that in current condition, this protest, the protests are meaningless and protesters not only may lose, but uh, they will be subject to further oppression. If we look at how Belarusians perceive various demands of protesters, the majority still support the fair election, investigation of violence against protesters by law enforcement bodies, release of all political prisoners, and uh, total end uh, to use of force against protesters by police. It's important to note there that on the one hand, we'll see that the number of people who do not share these demands is not grown. But the number of uh, people who are undecided is going up. And it has to do with apathy and uh, disappointment that are now dominating in the Belarusian society. And this block, we have a quite a big number of questions connected with uh, uh, social tensions and the feeling of social tensions. I'll show you a general slide later. But here we'll see how different segments of those in society feel the social tension. It's very much connected with the political convictions of, of a person. Hardcore protesters believe that the situation, there's a significant amount of social tension or it is uh, dire. It's important to look at neutrals here, how they perceive the situation. We see that they, uh, majority of them believe that the, the significant amount of social tension in society. These are four statements that divided into four segments. See that the protest nucleus do not feel safe in Belarus, does not feel safe. And the same is true about neutrals, the neutrals. The core protesters uh, believe that Belarus is not a success when it comes to coping with the coronavirus. As I said, it's this issue is highly politicized in Belarus. Overall, the protesters, the core protesters is not particularly happy and those well, the neutrals are not feeling that bad. 
still bad, but uh, while the Belarusian supporters uh, feel quite comfortable living in Belarus. Here's the division. In the general results, to some degree, to some extent, we got inspired by the official st statement in 2021 that uh, 2021 was the union the year of popular unity we saw that it wasn't particularly successful in this respect i mean 2021 over 50 percent of belarusians believe that the social tension in belarus uh, quite significant only one out of 10 Belarusians believe that in terms of social tension, Belarus is um, satisfactory. We have been talking for half an hour. I think I should speed up. Next is the social distance scale. You can read about this in Wikipedia, for example. In a nutshell, here we give people a big number of uh, about 14 different groups, either ethnic or not. And we ask them whether they are ready to uh, treat the representative of such people as citizen, fellow citizen, uh, neighbor, and so on. What's important for a political crisis here is that between the segments, like uh, the social supporters and co-protesters, there's a, a significant mutual dissatisfaction. And uh, they wouldn't want to be neighbors or fellow citizens, which proves that the 2021 is a year of uh, popular unity was a failure. Lukashenko supporters is more intolerant or less tolerant to all so the social groups present in the Belarusian society. The next question was about the state symbols. We see a, still a big number of people who say that neither of the symbols are popular with them, while the red and green flag is more popular because the, from many people, uh, it has to do with uh, Belarus being independent as a country and uh, growing, becoming a, more successful as a country. So it's important to understand that the support of the white and of the red and green flag are not uh, equal to the support of Lukashenko. Here's the division. Um, of uh, different uh, members of the society, the Lukashenko supporters are supporting the red and green flag among the neutrals about 48 percent 40 percent say the they don't support any of these next question about uh, approval disapproval of sanctions we see different groups of sanctions on the screen. Belarusians here are more uh, rather negative towards the wider comprehensive economic sanctions, while they are more positive about the um, concrete sections. Sixty-seven percent 
Well, at the same time, we say that the isolated sentences are supported by 43%, uh, which is quite logical. One thing is to be disapproving of uh, Berlusconi or other big enterprises suffering, while people also do not care much for the situation with the Belarusian oligarchs, those on the from the Lukashenko's circle. As to the people's view whether sanctions could help Belarus get out of the political crisis, overcoming it, situation is similar to the previous slide. Uh, again, I have covered the conclusions, and as I said, I'll be ready to go back during the Q&A. Next section is about the question how the power base of Lukashenko is perceived. In 2016, in June 2016, the Penn Institute of Social Economic and Political Studies, uh, the so-called NSEP, conducted a survey of uh, 1,500 Belarusian respondents, where respondents asked were asked several questions on, on socio-political topics. You must understand that uh, that survey was made by a different methodology. The, both urban and rural areas were covered at the time, and it was a face-to-face -face survey with interviewers talking with people. So. Uh, this is the data we compared to the NISEPI, or IISEPs. Uh, but it gives more understanding of what happened in Belarus over the last five years. So the question, whether you agree that Belarus is your state, only third of the response said that it's their state and they defend their, protect their interest. 22% believe that it's not their state. And it shows that the number of people who believe that Belarus is not their state has grown. Also has grown the number of people who believe that Belarus is, can be considered their state only in part. Let's move on. In your opinion, whom does President Lukashenko rely on most? Here we see that uh, Belarusians believe that Alexander Lukashenko's regime regime relies on the mil uh, military, Ministry of Internal Affairs, KGB, uh, state officials, and the like. People perceive Lukashenko's authority as being highly militarized and military and highly administrative. And this opinion highly enjoyed by the hardcore protesters as also, and also shared uh, by the neutrals. While Lukashenko's base, they uh, believe it's the regular people who are main supporters of Lukashenko, uh, on whom Lukashenko relies most, the most. Right, the conclusions. Next sec section, the last one, is the fear factor affecting political surveys in Belarus. Why we to ask, why we decide to ask such questions? It is because Belarusians are more and more discussing what is called sociological surveys and what reflects the mm, today's life. The questions published by the Belta and um, raised by Lukashenko all this uh, is not trusted by people. While independent surveys, they have uh, 
better reputation, but at the same time, there are some people believe that what we do is impossible to achieve in uh, today's condition. They believe that we should do this consider the fact that in Belarus the legislation is very restrictive so people believe that it's very uh, uh, holding a psychological survey in current conditions is difficult at the same time some people believe that the, the results may be skewed by the fear factor which is logical as you know the fact that the people are in Belarus arrested for their own color, the socks and whatever. So people may just be simply afraid of being honest when answering such questions. So we are using several techniques of stimulating the sincerity of the respondents, which showed to us how big the fear factor is. we we'll start by mentioning that these misgivings are not baseless. We see that the big part of people stop answering the question at the very beginning when they asked whether they're supporting the protest, they're neutral or supporting Lukashenko. And some, after answer, ask, answering all the questions, say that uh, this is difficult and that dangerous to answer people don't want uh, don't want don't want to have bad consequences this is called fear and the fear factor which affects the respondents it does affect uh, the respondents insignificantly but it does affect them we also ask people a projective question. Uh, and we ask them whether do you think whether they think other people are honest when answering such questions. We see that uh, Belarusians uh, say yes. Usually people uh, are honest in their replies, but not always. And next, we have several methodologies here. I'll uh, present only a few of them not to take more of uh, our time. It's important to understand uh, that is the first example. It's called use the UCT or unmatched count technique. I can read about them, about that uh, in Wikipedia or elsewhere. We divided our sample into two parts. Uh, we asked this first part of sample to write the number of statements that they agree with from zero to five. And we asked them five questions. Uh, like, uh, I own a car. Yes, they returned from business trip in Australia. My monthly salary is over 1,000 rubles, my phone number ends in one. I brushed my teeth yesterday. No sensitive questions here. We asked the second sample the same questions, but we added the question or point stating that I voted for Svetlana Zikhanovska in the 2020 election. Then we compared the replies and uh, we received uh, the number of people who supported Tikhanovska. According to our methodology, in 2020 in Belarus, 62% of respondents voted for Tikhanovska Tikhanovska um, among the rural uh, urban citizens with access to the internet. We compared such figure with the uh, compare this with the direct questions uh, we asked in the previous survey where we asked who you voted for and the number of people who said that they voted for Svetlana Tikhanovska was lower. 
we see that with every wave of research of survey the number of people who openly state uh, that they voted for switchkanovska is going down we believe it it has to do with the fear factor that people have when uh, answering questions uh, during the sociological survey and we have calculated that this fear factor may be about nine percent this is the biggest number of the people here are similar methodologists i'll uh, skip them since i spoke for much longer than i planned to then we ask questions uh, about the questions that worry people here are the politicized questions the many surveys and the scientists use different questions they don't ask directly people what they think of Lukashenko they put in a different way they ask for example a question uh what do you think about the changes in those so uh we'll be happy to go back to the fear fa factor during the q a next we have the eight a section about the eight most frequently asked questions um about the whether the poll is politicized about the methods of research under a thousand is under a thousand people enough is a computer assisted web interviews uh, okay uh, why we're not you including rural populations uh, the segmentation of the society and so on i'll be happy to discuss it and during the q a session i'm sorry for talking for longer than i planned but the presentation is quite long as it is thank you very much Rigor. i'll read the first question from my colleagues the joint question where do they get the presentation where do they get access to presentation to analyze it the presentation will be available today and tomorrow or tomorrow at the, our official website before that i will not be able to send it to you but i can go back to previous slides that uh, interest you colleagues there'll be a recording of this session on youtube or channel Belarusian press club could you record can you please write the official name of your chat of, of your website in the chat it will be available this week colleagues uh, if you have questions please raise your hand and i'll read the question from nadia kalinina from zerkala she wrote in the chat the following regard thank you for the presentation clearly this others of lukashenko and protesters uh, hold on to their opinions for a long time so the changes are most visible among the neutrals what were the main changes that you have noticed thank you Nadezhda. indeed it's important to understand that in belarus this changes among the the so-called uh, proponents of lukashenko uh, proponents of the uh, protest are not significant which is quite unique we have uh, uh, a long time has passed since August 2020, but mentally, the majority of Belarusians, in terms of political views, is still in August to September 2020. If we talk about the, the neutrals, we we'll see that among these people, there are more and more people becoming depoliticized, which has to do with the fears and disappointment thinking that the protesters have lost uh, results of 
with neutrals becoming more and more neutral, while before that they more they enjoyed more and more protestant mode. So now they are more neutral in their attitude. And the second question from Nadezhda. The survey was conducted in November last year, so before the events in Kazakhstan and before Belarusian military was sent there. So uh, things like attitude to Putin uh, and uh, trust in the Belarusian army could have changed since then. What do you think? It's hard to say. In a month's time, we'll, hold, we'll prepare the next presentation. We'll consider uh, what has been happening in Belarus since November 2020. But often we find ourselves in the situation when we plan in this search or survey, but we don't know what will happen next. Uh, three months ago, the topic of migrants, the Belarusian borders was very sensitive, very important. And uh, today, when I was, when we're preparing presentations, we are not particularly worried by that issue. So as to the attitude to Putin, CSTO, and attitude to the army, these will be covered in the next survey. Thank you very much. The question from Borga Simashka in the chat. Hello, can we say that this uh, split in the society has been in the society for the last 20 or 30 years, or is the proportion changes? What affects that? I think that this current level of the social tension used to be different. I see one of my senior colleagues, Andrei Vardamatsky, joining us in our Zoom session. I think uh, he mentioned that Belarus is the country with uh, a negative opinion of people hidden very deeply. I think this is what happened among the pro protest proponents. They uh, feel very unsafe and they're very negative of the current Belarusian state. We see that the split has become much wider compared to what it used to be. And the same is happening on the other side. The other side, the Lukashenko proponents are becoming more and more radicalized. They're more and more negative about uh, the opposition. And to some degree, they have to do this because Lukashenko is forcing them to do this. If they don't believe that Svetlana Tikhanovsky is a terrorist, how can you uh, approve of the current actions of the, of the authorities? So they have to do this. This uh, degree of negativity, of negative attitude towards the protest proponents is growing. It is happening to done, it is done to compensate uh, for the negatives. So we talk about the proportions. They have changed without a doubt. And the people who are against the authorities are growing in their number. There's a question sent in advance. The promised referendum, do you think it will affect the social tension? It will either in, uh, if lead to the status quo or improve, increase the tensions of uh, the official data. Based on the official data about this, we see that the um, proposed changes do not have any solution to the political crisis in Belarus. So it means that it can, uh, the social tension will remain the same or will become worse. I think that it will even make it worse since uh, Belarusians once again will have to either stay at home or come to the polling station. Belarusians, as we noticed, have a very big mistrust of the CC. People believe that they will be fooled once again. Again, this negatively affects the attitude of Belarusians towards the new changes, 
negatively affects the social tensions. Several more questions from the chat. So it turns out that the answers to many questions depend on the political position, political stance of the respondent. So if the number of neutrals uh, is growing, what will, what will happen with the answers to non-politicized questions? Or can we say that neutrals are uh, more ob objective in their uh, assessment of the pandemic. Indeed, the people who are politicized uh, on both sides, the feel that they uh, need to follow the so-called the so-called pipeline. So, sugar proponents believe that need to state that the Belarus is a success at coping with coronavirus. Oh, well, still the huge number of people believe that the, the number of uh, cases, coronavirus, coronavirus cases is uh, uh, hidden. The true number is hidden and it's not disclosed. So uh, the neutrals may have a attitude to everything that is less biased. Colleagues, if you have questions, please raise your hand. We have another question from YouTube broadcast. What do you think about asking question about the Belarusian language, whether it should more widely be used more widely? And what is the current state? We did not touch upon the issue of the Belarusian language in our survey, but at the same time, uh, other sociological surveys show that the Belarusian language is less popular than the Russian language. Since I'm a Belarusian language speaker, uh, and I can, judging by my own experience, say that indeed the relatively low number of people in Belarus believe that the Belarusian should be the only state language. Of course, the number of such people has grown over the last two years, but the number of such people is not a majority. Thank you. Next question from Volga. Simashka, Radio Net. Can you please explain uh, uh, what does the improved uh, ratings of the question has to do with? We don't see anything like that. It's uh, the Lukashenko's rating is the same, and it has been the same for about 18 months. All the standards have been conducted in sociological surveys, and I think it has to do with the fact that Lukashenko has mobilized all his supporters, and uh, the group that is about 30% of Belarusian people that uh, remain loyal to what Lukashenko is doing, to some extent, it shows that some people, including me, could have been wrong, saying that the uh, supporters Lukashenko will see what he's doing and uh, will get disappointed in him. Unfortunately, all these repressions, all this violence did not contribute to uh, the number of Lukashenko proponents going down. Thank you. Nice question from the chat. What do you think? How can be explained the lower trust ratings uh, uh, in uh, Tikhanovskaya compared to Lukashenko? Lukashenko, uh, we know that uh, Tikhanovskaya and, Luk and uh, Latushka are urging the introduction of more sanctions. Well, the fact is the a lot of attention is paid to her uh, in the state TV and has to do with uh, gender stereotypes and various perception of uh, her experience and uh, by Latushka's experience and professional experience. These things can affect the people's views. And what is important, uh, Tikhanovska unlike Latushka was the candidate 
and she's the main face of the Belarusian protest. Our research survey shows that the majority of the respondents voted for her, and uh, she received the biggest credit for it. Thank you for your answers, Rehor. We have been talking for an hour. There, we have time for one last question, either in voice or in the chat, or maybe Rehor can make some conclusions, final conclusions. Well, actually, I don't have any more questions. Uh, I see the question about the next wave. We're planning to uh, tie it to the referendum. It uh, will be connected with the opinions of people, the intention to vote or not to vote. So it will be done around the referendum date. Thank you. Since there are no more questions, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. Thank you, Rehor. I would like to remind you that the recording of the broadcast uh, will be available at the Press Club channel on YouTube. The research will be available at the official website in the near future, in the next couple of days. Please stay tuned. Please uh, read our chat, our website, and uh, until next time, have a great day. Thank you very much.